And I think the integration of my applications onto the desktop is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I was saying, I think I was saying this again to Roy in, in RC. Um, far, I'm actually, dare I say, getting far more functionality and uh, more efficient um, with the integration of, the, of my of my widgets and my desktop applications. It all seems to work a lot better. Um, it doesn't seem to be so pieced together that maybe GNOME was, where you'd feel a little bit disjointed with your different applications. Sometimes they would have a, a flickering icon in a in a applet on the, on your taskbar in GNOME, and other times it wouldn't work at all. And it seems pretty solid and pretty stable, so I'm really, really trusted with it, to be fair. And I would, I would probably compare, and I, although I hate this movie, I'll compare it to this movie. KD is probably like that dragon on Avatar, where the, um, the hero of the day had to tame it, and then once he did, it was a loyal and faithful servant. You know, you know what the icon of KD is? Um, it's the dragon, at least in the uh, three the three point X releases, it used to. Yeah, be. I'm not even sure there is an official one for the four version. <laughs> but I don't think I think they removed the dragon. Maybe part of the marketing tactic. Oh, we don't want animals around. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's. I mean, yeah, it's, it's been it's, it's been very nice. Um, the only question that I couldn't answer, and it now seems to have resolved itself, is um, I would have a uh, on my before I got my 24 hour clock, I had an AM and PM obviously uh, designated to say. Uh, that it was morning or afternoon. However, for some reason, halfway through my flicking, it t- it lost the M on the uh, PM bit or AM. Yes, it's it's quite typical with the widget. Is it, are you using a widget on the desktop, or is it something that fits into one of the panels? Or maybe He's talking about the panel widget. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I saw so you using yeah, the yeah. Is, you're using the old. You're not actually using folder view, do you? You, you have like the icons. You have the launchers. You on yeah. your desktop, you basically have things that launch applications. Mm. Which is kind of the old way of using KDE because they were trying to introduce the notion of folder view, so you can have several desktops, or you can have an FTP folder, uh, which which would be beneficial, I think, to your efficiency. You could put all your favorite directories with all kinds of nice utilities in your desktop. I I I see the potential of that. In my personal opinion, until they make switching between them a little bit more seamless, like there needs to be a plugin for CompPiz, where the same way I put my mouse up on the corner to see my desktops, I can put it up to see all of those and switch between them. And that doesn't quite exist yet. It's I mean the so many little nice little features of KDE and blog say it, it may be an emulation of. Uh, the GNOME 2 series, what I've got now, and my uh, my sort of customising of KD, but I'm very I'm very happy with it, and I I won't be switching. I I couldn't say I would be happy to leave the new user to Linux alone with the uh, with the KDE desktop and they would just customise at their whim. Uh, I think uh, GNOME or GNOME 2 series or X, XFCE would probably be far better suited to to that particular new user. I think uh, I just can't understand why simple little things uh, like like the time like it like that type of uh, concept haven't been made simpler already. Surely I can't be the only one who has been a little bit disgruntled. And I think they're doing themselves an injustice by maybe if they're wanting to attract people from the GNOME desktop by making these features hidden under layers of menus that really aren't don't make sense for the, the section it is it's in. So but that, I mean that's that's one criticism by put one person so it's it's up to personal preference. I'm sure Roy and Rusty are Season KDE veterans that all make sense. No, I, I agree with you on the clock one. Every so often you come across a widget that you're like, okay, I know how to fix this, but why didn't the widget include this setting as part of the widget? Mm. And every so often, but you know, the widgets are all individually done, so it's, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like some applications are better than others type yeah. thing. It basically a better widget's needed. Mm. You, you should treat them almost like, um, not exactly like strings, but it would be like apps or something you download from the store, uh, and they aren't necessarily part of the core of KDE. I mean, KDE is mostly like uh, KWIN and Plasma Desktop, or Plasma Desktop, no, I think it's called Plasma Netbook, or there is the interface for KDE on Netbooks. I think we'll cover it after the next break, but uh, the KDE in general is a is now called a software compilation, so it's it's basically a collection of tools uh, more than a desktop environment, so you have to right. you have to treat it like basically. I don't have to to have a desktop. I don't have to have toolbars or any of that sort. So sometimes I deliberately just kill Plasma, and all I, I then have is I can open a command line and launch everything from there, and all I have is just like the window decorations, and and it still renders everything okay. You know, okay I, I mean, if I wanted to, I could put the um, launcher on the desktop. Mm-hmm. 
you know, very much like Windows 8's doing. If I want that, I can do that because it's entirely independent you could it widget that. applications. You can assemble them wherever and however you want, which basically some of them need to grow up and some of them uh, are pretty grown and some of them are pieces of crap, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which actually brings me on very nicely to my final point about this, and this is not this is anything to do with KDE or uh, PC Windows, and it's a package which I hope both of you have tried. Uh, like I said, I won't be speaking about this by myself completely. Um, Clementine, and hopefully you're going to say, ah, oh, yes, I've used that before. Rusty, Clementine, I haven't used it for a while. Yeah, okay, but at least you know what it is, right? This is my oh, tale of woe. Um, when I first booted up Clementine to have a little look, I'm not particularly a big uh, music fan on the PC. I prefer listening to it what I regard as properly, and that's either on a record or on CD. Um, so I'm not particularly keen on having it on my uh, computer, but I, I do occasionally play on desktop a couple of, a couple of tracks now. Well, my my first question when I saw this Clementine is why was it introduced? Why was it brought as part of the default uh, packaging for uh, PC Linux OS? I thought it was horrendous. It was slow. It was uh, really rather sluggish and very unstable. Um, I believe it's currently in version 0.7, which was released in March this year, off the top of my head. Um, and I couldn't understand why this package was there when there were so many other better packages, far more mature, far, far more compact uh, than this beast that was presented to me. But anyway, I decided to persevere with it. I thought, no, I'll, um, I'll stick with it. I could be wrong, like uh, in, in my KDE case, I you know, a bit of time, a bit of work. And uh, so throughout the day, I was open, opened up an instance, played a few tracks, closed it down, came back to the computer a bit later on. Now, I set the computer up running for about 10 o'clock in the morning. By the time I came back about half past eight in the evening, my computer was running about as quick as a ZX81 with a blown fuse. It was crawling. My CPU fan was ready to lift the machine off the floor, and I couldn't understand what was eating all my resources. So I took a little nose about the system and found that every instance of clemency that I thought had closed down hadn't been terminated properly and was running in the background. Um, but it was using up like 15-20% of the resources of my uh, quad core. Um, God knows what it was doing, it was doing something. Um, so really I just want to mention that, and I, I put this on the, uh, Diaspora and Google Plus, I got a few comments back from people that had received sort of similar issues with it, and just wanted to know, because I've never used it before myself, what you two thought of it, had you had any experience with it, and I'm like... Personally, I... Do you know the history of the project? And what's it was, isn't it Fault from Am Amarok or, Amarok or something? Um, yeah, you know, no, what, what, what it has to do with, when Amarok 2 came out, there were people who didn't like Amarok 2. So Clementine is basically, we want to keep the Amarok 1 way of doing things. And I've never had a problem with the Amarok 2. I rather like what they did with Amarok 2, but that's me. <laughs> And it's quite heavy when it comes to RAM, so I moved to a, one of the, I wouldn't say forks, but it's a Python-based uh, relative, and it's called uh, Minirock. So Minirock is, I think it means like miniskirt in Dutch or something, but it's actually just a mini miniature version of, of Amarok, and it's doing all the basic things. It supports all the functionality I need, but only takes about 30 megabytes of RAM if you have loads, you know, big uh, playlist instead of about 200, 150 megabytes of RAM for Amarok 2. Uh, and Amarok 1 was excellent as well. I don't I don't know what they did with version 2, but I think they were trying to simplify it to make it a bit like the iTunes. Uh, uh, the, 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 what it is, is it's, it's actually the same thing we were talking about with Unity. It was a complete dramatic UI change, and initially some things that were there weren't there. They've now been added back. Uh, I waited to upgrade till they added them back, um, but... Once they added them back, it was great. And it's really the same thing. It's that there were people like, why did you change it? <laughs> well, suffice to say, I've, um, I, I got rid of it. I, I, I took off the system completely in favor of um, Audacious um, and my little Winamp style skin that I have. Because for me, an MP3 player, which is what I'm going to be using it for, a media player for, for uh, music, is something I want small, discreet, and inside of my desktop. I don't want this big, cumbersome UI which is, uh, looks like it's been uh, written in Visual Basic, thrown onto my screen. I want just something discreet in the corner with a little graphic equalizer that looks pretty. So that came off my system. But I, was, I was just very interested, and certainly for me, it was a very bizarre choice uh, for PC Linux just to go with, because the distro itself, very modern, very sleek, very, uh, well, very stable. I, I, I'm wondering about that, because mine by default comes with Amarok. 
So, which version is this you're using now? I think uh, the one I I spoke to. Two eleven six. Uh, two, yeah, two thousand eleven point uh, six is the one. Which one, one do you, uh, which one does Rusty uh, speak about? 